Hey guys, Omni here. We are finally back for Legends of Tomorrow with episode 9. It's been a little bit since we ended off on last episode that we saw where the team, to celebrate Sarah's return, decided to select a, a mission that would feel like a classic Legends romp to ease her back into the saddle, so to speak. And they go back into the Old West, which for me personally, I really enjoy a lot of the Western themed episodes because I just like seeing how they have fun with the style, the aesthetic, and the... Uh, Western genre in general, you know, from the gunslinging to the saloons to the bounties to the law and throw in a gold crapping graboid and you got a fun little mix in here. Also, David Ramsey makes a guest appearance, though not as Diggle, which we've been seeing him pop up all over the place in the Arrowverse so far in the past few weeks. But he shows up here as Bass Reeves, the first black U.S. law enforcement officer. And he, seeing him sport that goofy mustache was just a gem. And of course, like seeing Sarah come over and be like, dig? He was like, yeah, I can dig. And like, just not even understand what's happening there. And they just roll with it. I love, I love this show. It just, it's the nice palate cleanser between everything else that goes on in the Arrowverse and the, a lot of the other shows that kind of take themselves a little too seriously. I'm glad the show just has fun with it. And I, I really liked last episode. Also, we found out Sarah is immortal. She took not only a bullet that had full penetration through her skull, but she was unloaded upon by uh, just a bunch of bullets and just took them all. Fine. Just, we see the whole close up and heal over as well as all of her wounds. She can't die now. That's one of her healing gifts that we found out so far, as well as a overwhelming need to eat cherries for some reason. So we're seeing some weird happenings related to her alien DNA kind of kick in this episode. Not only does Spooner throughout the episode get a lot of signals from uh, Sarah, which kind of play into some funny jokes here and there uh, in the beginning of it, which was a lot of fun. Nate unloading on everybody about his frustrations with trying to keep himself calm and collected with everybody, everything going on and nobody really checking on him. There's a lot of great character beats in the last episode as well. John trying to interrogate Gary about the fountain to try to get his powers back. And there's just a lot of stuff happening. I'm curious to see how it all transitions into this. We're past the midway point of the season now, once we get into this episode. So really, I, I don't know where, where we go from here. We took out Bishop seemingly. He might be back. Who knows? But are we going to be setting up something else going forward? They obviously still need to collect all the aliens that they set loose upon the timeline. But is there going to be a bigger threat? More than likely, maybe it's Sarah. Who knows? But let's go ahead and dive into this episode. Guys, remember the full-length unedited reaction watch-alongs are available over on Patreon, or if you become a member here on the channel itself, get you access to those as well. I've been putting up a couple of movies on there as well, if you want to check them out too. But guys, let's go ahead and dive into this. Here we go. There you are. It's not a good thing to just kind of like lose or drop. I don't want to think about what Nate and Zari were doing in there to make you fall off my wrist in the middle of the night. Actually, rounds of me kicking your butt. According to the temporal chronometer, today is your birthday. Oh, I'm a quarter century. Happy birthday. He's only 25. I, for some reason, I thought he was a lot older than that. Yeah, that's right. We don't know which of our totems you decided to have a sleepover in. Pardon me, but the pod's projected path is Vancouver, British Columbia, 2023. Oh, hey, they don't have to really fake where they're shooting. <laughs> I, I, I need to see you right now. Where are you? Uh, uh, hold on. I keep losing track of my stupid portal thingy. <laughs> I'll grab one. It's a special that today. It's a day that only comes around once a year. Oh, cute affirmation. Anyway, if these are uh, vacations between names oh, and they become the huge, we need to work out a schedule. I did not sleep a wink this weekend. <laughs> she doesn't remember it's his birthday. I mean, even that's all, they're on a time ship. That's not hard to... I would say that'd just be pretty easy to forget what day it is. Do you not care that he's doing God knows what with your wrist? <sighs> Oh, hi. How long was I in that totem? <laughs> oh, mixed face, man. I can't believe you went and got yourself knocked up. Got 
myself knocked up? He's one to talk. You, know you did with mom in my high school gym supply closet. You guys here for the bud sty taping? Uh, here you go. What? Uh, Faking a mission, pretending like you forgot today was my birthday so you could spring bud sty tickets on me? Too good. <laughs> <laughs> Nate fucking mouthing fuck <laughs> yeah so you better get in there birthday boy before I change my mind oh <laughs> god damn it Spooner. <laughs> Finally, something interesting happens on the show. This is not supposed to happen. Weird little fucker. <laughs> Why can't it be Bebo? Come on over. Come here, little guy. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What does she do in the totem for like, you know, self-care? School the ancestors and poker, but mainly she wanna talk about B. Really? And for whatever reason, she asked me to keep an eye on him tonight to make sure he didn't party too hard. Oh I just got it. She's the better sister. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm sorry. <laughs> All good. Oh, let's get out of here. Hey, hey. Ezra. I don't think he likes that. I'm going to talk to props about leaving things lying around. Somebody could get hurt. What? <laughs> Wharton is the business school my mom and Bubba think I attend. <laughs> What's happening to me? I think the change in your favorite show is having an effect on you. He's better groomed, better caffeinated. I'd say Bearheart got a free upgrade. No, 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 no. This is not good. The butterfly effect from one small change in the... Mm, it's making him a normie. Six foot two. Is this for the CW? <laughs> well, so much for Plan Z. You gave me permission to leave home and go on the craziest adventure of my life. Please, don't change your show. You must really love being a PA. Like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just eating the script. show was supposed to be about the things that make us laugh i know it's not for everyone but to the people who get it it's life-changing what about the people who pay us to make a hit the studio is threatening to cancel us <laughs> yeah well i'd rather have one person laughing in the audience than be a complete sellout Oh. You know, the edges have to be perfect or the whole presentation is thrown off, that's all. <laughs> I'm so sorry, honey. <laughs> Are you okay? He was even asking all these questions about Nico, like where he grew up and his class schedule. And he's really interested in his cross-country training, even down to the hours on the routes. Oh, he's going to hunt him down. Oh, see, I knew he'd come around. So. <laughs> <laughs> Take it from a trained assassin. You want to murder somebody without a trace? You gather as much intel as possible. Lita, your dad is going to kill your boyfriend. <laughs> oh my God, dude. 
The timeline hasn't changed that fast. Hmm. Oh no. I didn't know you had it in you. Astra. Dad. I thought you were going to kill him. I was. Dad. No, no, it, it's okay. <laughs> we talked it out. Totally understands how we got caught up in the moment. Said the same thing happened to him and Kayla. Wait. You and Kayla? Ha! Ha ha! Hand over the keys. Unless you want to take a ride, babe. If you call me babe one more time. Where's your totem? Totem? It's a rolly. Uh, <laughs> are you fucking kidding? My girlfriend's in that totem you tour. <laughs> Who lives in this dump? Your Zari is gone. And without the totem, so is everything she sacrificed her life for. A decision I doubt she would have made if she knew she was being replaced by a version of her who, who didn't realize how a sitcom literally changed her brother's life. See, we all messed up, but we gotta get moving. When this timeline catches up to Bear Rod, there's no telling who we're gonna be without him. When you got caught up in the moment, cover your ears, Lita, were there any, uh, tentacles involved? You dated an alien? <laughs> Jealous? Now get out of here. I want to spend some more time with my daughter. Mm. Come on. Don't let this be the fight that changes things between you because once that happens, you could lose him forever. Instead of lighting up in the dark all alone, <laughs> you need to get your ass in there and take back your show. You can't make me go back. <laughs> what the fuck? Nick Hunter, intergalactic alien law enforcer. What the hell is a nosy landlord doing? It's called a plot twist, amateur. <laughs> now, where's Gus Gus? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> what are you waiting for? Behart's probably looking for someone to take shrooms with as we speak. Oh, you know how to imitate Mama's disapproving death stare, right? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Oh, my little brother is all grown up. <laughs> Flannel! That's the sign. She laid eggs in your head, and now you're growing a brood. Ouch. Is that why he's acting weird? So you're saying my dad is pregnant? Ah. Yep. In his head. Yeah. Sorry, I can't <laughs> help it. This is the laugh I was programmed with. That I did not see coming. Well, okay. What the fuck? <laughs> it's so mixed pregnant with fucking babies in his head. Oh my god. Okay. Well, that was a that was a fun little episode. It was a harmless little one. I like the focus on uh, Zari and Barod. 
though. Um, diving into, you know, the little things. Like, I, I feel like this is very... Um, it's kind of close to home, at least with, like, the concept of, like, a show or whatever. Like, something... A lot of people, at least, don't always think about, I think, whenever they're... At least growing up a lot of people that at least in my family and whatnot like didn't understand like how pivotal some of the things i was watching and taking in actually were to shaping who i was um and i think that's the case with a lot like everybody really like what what you really gravitate towards when you're younger can really form and inform the direction of a lot of your life your likes your interests your drives your inspirations and like seeing how just this dumb little show getting ruined was changing Bayrod into this like version of himself that n none of them could really handle being around. Like it was just a betrayal of who he was to just seeing like how much of a drastic change one show at somebody's life can have an impact of art in general can have. It can be music, it can be a movie, it can be TV, it can be anything, really. It can even come down to just being a person. And, I like, it's just, like, um, I like that representation that we had in this and with the changing timeline. And um, just like before, we've seen it happen on uh, the show before, like, as things kind of catch up. Like, what, they have they have a little bit of a time before the timeline sets in to fix things. So they kept, con like... They kept continuity with that, at least. And then them playing with the totems disappearing, them playing with, you know, Nate going to visit Zari, uh, OG Zari, and then our, uh, Zari 2.0 kind of learning a little bit of a lesson about, you know, appreciating Bayrod, appreciating what she's kind of had, appreciating, like, the fact that a previous version of her sacrificed herself so that they could even exist. And then just trading spots with her. So I guess we're going to have OG Zari for a few weeks. I don't know how many episodes, but for a little bit. I mean, John's away. So it it would be... We don't have that relationship to really worry about. So we get to kind of play with that. Their conversation in the totem was really nice and sweet. And I liked that. Actually got me kind of emotional seeing OG Zari and how she reacted to being able to go topside. Um... This whole time, like, I thought Gary was going to grow a backbone and, like, go off on Mick for sleeping with his ex fiance and all this stuff. Even if it was, like, in the heat of the moment that they had actually broken things off. I thought that was where, I thought that's what that was building to. But nope. Apparently, she laid eggs in his head. So I'm curious to see. And that's been affecting his mood, maybe why he's been kind of mood swingy because like he's flip-flopping on a lot of things especially when he went to go kill that kid and then he changed his mind decided to actually hug the kid and like forgive him and like thank him for being there and all that stuff very not so mick um but it was let's see how that evolves because uh i'm pretty sure Gu the gus gus bit of it for this and the show in general was like it was whatever um the alien, uh, based on a little bit of the promo for next week, is going to carry over into next week's episode. And I think it's going to get a little more out of hand then. But um, not a whole overall impact to what happened outside of the effects it had on the TV show. Um, <laughs> I loved the... Uh, the prying of information that Mick was feigning as getting to know the guy, like and when he was asking Lita questions about him and it was just him getting locations, times, so that he can track him down and take him out, you know, knowing his routine, knowing his, you know, footprint in the area of what his usual spots are going to be, the times he's going to be there. And Sarah, as soon as she heard that, she was like, Wait, wait, what? He asked what kind of questions? It, nah, he's going to go kill your boyfriend. That's what he's going to do. It was a fun little episode. I like the focus on it. It was a little, it was interesting. Um, definitely not one of my favorites, but I had fun with it. It was cute. 
I'm um, curious to see where we go with it with next week's episode. Um, I like, I like the Rip Hunter thing that they had threw in there when Nate went out there when he was like Nate Hunter, and started putting popped his collar and started doing his little Rip Hunter impression kind of, as he was a uh, flip the script went off script rather to uh, get Gus off the set or whatever. I like that whole little shtick. Um, but yeah, it was all right episode, guys. I honestly, I don't have much to say, so I'm going to pass it off to you guys. What do you think of this episode? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. And guys, just like before and like always, full unedited reactions over on Patreon or if you become a member here on the channel. Huge shout out to our channel legends, Bandy Share, Ryan, Karen, and Jason Coleman. Thank you guys so much for your support. We got a Discord open if you want to join and talk about this. The other ever shows, DC in general, Marvel, whatever. Come hang out. Links to that and all my socials are in the description of this video. Well, that's it for now, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.